Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Maliki and in this video we're going to install Ruby on Rails on Windows. We are going to be using a Linux subsystem for this. I believe it's the best and the fastest way to run Ruby on Rails on Windows. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is click the Windows button and then we're going to go into search and we're going to search turn Windows features on or off. So turn, turn Windows features on or off. We're going to click on this. And then we're the three, there are three folders that we're going to have to enable. The first one is Windows Subsystem for Linux. This is going to install some packages that makes it easier to have a subsystem for Linux on Windows. Then we're going to need the Windows Hypervisor Platform and the Virtual Machine Platform. Then click OK. And then you're going to have to restart your computer to install the required files. So I'm going to restart my computer and then I'll see you after it's restarted. Okay, so I've just restarted my computer. And now the next step that we're going to follow is we're gonna search again, and we're gonna go to the Microsoft Store. So search up Microsoft Store, and we're gonna go to Microsoft Store. And then once you're inside of here, although it takes forever to load because it's not a very good store, I'll tell you that. We're gonna search up Ubuntu. Whoops. We're gonna search up Ubuntu. And we wanna get the LTS version. We don't want to get the normal version, we want to get the LTS version. So right now it's version 22.04.3 and I have it already. So I'm going to click open, but for you, you need to click install. Then once that is completely installed, what you need to do is next go to the Windows terminal. This is just a Windows terminal. It's really much better than command prompt, has lots of features. I'll show you it now. So we're going to go here. To Windows Terminal, I'm going to click Open. Obviously, you're going to have to install it. And this is what the Windows Terminal looks like. You can open up your Command Prop PowerShell Ubuntu. It has settings to change the colors and things like that. And so, yeah, the Windows Terminal is pretty good. And then we're going to open up the Windows Terminal. And we're going to go into Command Prompt. And we're going to run this command, wsl.exe, update. Hit Enter. And then this is going to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is because I was getting this error. WSL2 requires an update to its kernel component. If you didn't get this error, then you do not have to run this command. But it's just in my case, I was getting this error. So we're going to wait for this command to finish, and then I'll see you when it's done. As you can see, now it says Windows subsystem for Linux has been installed. So what I'm going to do is open my Ubuntu. I'm going to see what this says. And as you can see, now I'm in an instance of Ubuntu. And so the next thing that we're going to do is install Ruby and Rails on Windows on Ubuntu. So I'm going to go and search up the Digital Ocean Guide. And I'll have a link to this guide in the description. And essentially what we're going to do is follow every command. So I'm going to copy this command, sudo apt update. And it's giving me the password, so I'm going to have to enter my password. So that command has run. Now next we have to install the dependencies required to install Ruby. So I'm going to hit copy paste and enter, then yes, then we're going to run the next command, all done, then the next one, and you essentially we just want to run every single command here, here's another one, and as you can see, I ran this type rbnv command, and we're getting the correct output, so that's correctly installed, and then we're going to install Ruby with Ruby build, so let's do that, run this command, and that just lists all the, available, all the available versions of Ruby. So in this guide, they're saying we should install Ruby 2.7.6, but I want to install the newest version of Ruby. So we're going to install Ruby install, rbenv install, Ruby 3.3.0. But you install whichever version, version of Ruby you want. I recommend the newest one. And now it's installing this version of Ruby. Installing Ruby can be a lengthy process, so be prepared for the installation to take some time to complete. <laughs> okay, now that Ruby is installed, Ruby 3.3, we're going to install Rails. So let's run gem install Rails. And so now it just installed Rails for me. And just to check that they're both successfully installed, you need to make sure to run Ruby-V, which gives us our Ruby version, and Rails-V. This is a different Ruby version to the one I just installed. This is the one I previously had installed. 
but as long as it displays some sort of version that's relatively new, you're going to be okay. I'm not sure why it didn't update this current version of Ruby to the new one, but I'll figure that out a different day. As long as you have Ruby installed and Rails installed, it's all good. And so the next thing that we're going to do is install git. So I'm going to search up git for Windows, download this one, download, and it's downloading git for Windows. If you don't know what git is, git is a version control software that allows us to push our code up to and back it up to sources like GitHub. So I'm going to double click on this file and then we're going to install git. Okay. And now we have git installed. So that's good. And the next thing that we're going to install is node.js. So we're going to install node.js. So it's the same process. We're going to say node.js download. But in this case, we're going to install it on Ubuntu. So we're going to use the command sudo apt install node.js. Enter the password. Yes. And then it's installing node.js. Okay. So now it's successfully installed node.js. And so now we have git, Ruby, Ruby Rails, and node.js. So we should technically be able to start a Rails application and things should work. But there's a couple more things that we need. So what we need, obviously, a code editor like VS Code, PostgreSQL, and then we should be good to go. So I'm going to download VS Code. So let's go and install VS Code. So I'm just going to search up VS Code for Windows. I'm sure you know how to do this, but just making this as comprehensive as it can be. And then we're just going to install VS Code. So double click it and install it. And then while that's installing, I'm going to go online in the browser and I'm going to search up PostgreSQL install for Ubuntu. And then I'm going to copy this command, go here, hit enter, and then hit yes. And so now we should be installing PostgreSQL. I do like to install it on Windows as it gives me a package called pgadmin4, which is basically a GUI that allows me to use PostgreSQL but with a with a program or a window. So it makes it way easier to use PostgreSQL instead of typing commands for everything. But now that we have PostgreSQL installed, I'm going to hit clear. And we're going to create a new directory. So I'm going to go make directory, Rails projects, enter. Then we're going to go cd Rails projects. And then we're going to run a Rails command. We're going to create a project. We're going to say Rails new first Linux test, <laughs> enter. And we should be creating the Rails project. And here we go. As you can see, Rails is successfully working. But let's just wait until we actually run the Rails server and see if it works. And so that command is successfully run. And now I'm going to run code dot. And it did not work. Right. So after restarting my computer, I was actually able to run the command code dot. So now I'll just cd into that directory. So I'll go cd. And then I'll go cd Rails projects. And then I'll go cd fist. Linux test because I spelt it wrong and then we can do uh, Rails s or first we can do code dot and then we can do Rails s and as you can see I'll just control left click on this link and it takes us to the Rails page everything working Rails version Ruby version this means that Ruby on Rails has been successfully installed while we haven't set up Postgres with this particular project I'll show you how to do that in a future video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please subscribe, like the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.